Well, hello everybody, Mike with Spray Jones coming to you with another video in our rigged series. This time we're talking about structural support of the spray foam insulation. And if you're new to this channel in this series, my name is Mike, I'm the owner of Spray Jones and I produce content on spray foam insulation to educate the industry, both the spray foam installers and the end users as to what spray foam can and can't do. So today we're taking a look at structural support and we have got a gem of a document here. If you're not familiar, Mason Knowles is a long-standing expert in the spray foam field in the United States and he has a uh, web page under his name masonknowles.com with a lot of really good uh, industry papers. And we're going to take a look at one of his papers here today which is the structural support and we're looking at this now it talks about closed cell spray foam has been recognized for years for its ability to remain in place during high wind events however its use as a structural enhancement material for roofing and wall assemblies has not been fully developed i agree this paper reviews and discusses field and laboratory research case studies relating to the structural use of spray foam and roof and wall assemblies including roofing industries committee so Let's scroll on what he talks about here about wind uplift. This is really interesting. Now this is exterior roofing applications for uh, the roofing industry. Well, we're not into that. Spray Jones never has done any of that work, never will. That's a very specific subset of the spray foam world that we've never addressed here on this channel because you really need to be a roofing specialist that then incorporates spray foam insulation. But we can take a look at this data. It states that it has been known for many years that spray foam roofing system can enhance the wind uplift resistance of a roof covering field observations of closed cell spray foam performance after Hurricane Hugo and Andrew led to spray foam alliance as SPFA sponsored a wind uplift test of spray foam roofing sisters under Underwriters Laboratory and Factory Mutual Global. Under, according to UL and SPF's wind uplift resistance, exceeding the capacity of the equipment to measure the wind uplift pressures, UL observed that the spray foam roofs applied over built up roofing or BUR roofing and metal increased wind uplift resistance of those existing roof coverings. Factory Mutual Global measured spray foam's pull resistance on concrete at over 900 pounds of uplift pressure and over metal deck assemblies at over 200 pounds of wind uplift resistance. Note that the mode of failure was metal fastener back out and not of the spray foam. But little is mentioned at, uh, but little mention has been made of its availability ability to prevent structural damage to roof and wall assemblies of buildings. So now we're going to scroll down to uh, the actual report here. This is something interesting on wind uplift and enhancement of roof decks. So in 2008, Honeywell Corporation and Huntsman Corporation, NCFI, sponsored research on wind uplift enhancements of spray foam insulation, closed cell, installed to the underside of roof deck assemblies. This was promoted by field research conducted by groups such as R-I-C-O-W-I, Hurricane Team Investigators, right? So the sponsors contracted with Hurricane Research located in University of Florida to conduct an ASTM E330-02 standardized test method for structural performance of exterior windows, doors, skylights, curtain walls by uniform static air pressure difference, testing of the wood assemblies. According to ASTM, this test method is a standard procedure for determining structural performance under uniform static air pressure difference. This is typically intended to represent the effects of wind load on exterior building surface elements and is accepted by the state of Florida, Miami-Dade County for testing structural elements including roof deck assemblies for high wind resistance. Two types of spray foam applications were tested on OSB panels with wood studs installed in accordance with Florida building code requirements for high wind velocity regions. So here is our testing method. They are going to be using NCFI polyurethanes insulin star two pound density foam, 15 specimens produced in total. And it looks like they're going to have a baseline here with OSB two by four rafters. Then they're just going to fill in the sides to lock the studs in and then they're doing a full foam application right and this if we're going to trust these this was march 16th the 17th 
Results were eye-opening, as shown in Table 1. Even with a roof deck assembly that was constructed to comply with Florida's high wind requirements, the spray foam increased wind uplift resistance on the 3-inch fill from 3 to 3.2 times the original uplift resistance. The fillet-styled application increased wind resistance uplift from 1.9 to 2.2, the original uplift resistance so they are increasing the ability the structural strength of each of these which is this is a no-brainer this would make a lot of sense and then how could it not be better than just standard lumber and we've been seeing this for years folks uh the data coming out of florida especially with the hurricanes so maximum wind uplift is increased 2.2 times and three times so this shows what Close cell foam will do to the underside of your roof deck uh, for structural support. And I'm a firm believer in this. Also in the amount of live load, like snow load, that can be uh, placed on top of it. And we've seen this with hilltop structures where we've got houses or shops that are on top of a valley edge or a hilltop. Uh, it's a huge advantage to have the spray foam to the underside of the roof deck and not allow the air to come up through vented attic assembly. So your soffit is not open, so the air isn't able to penetrate up through the soffit and get underneath the roof assembly. I've seen extreme cases where winds have gotten in excess of 60 to 70 miles an hour where they've been able to lift up on the rafters strong enough to crack them at the drywall levels. Where the ceiling and the wall meet, they've been able to crack it because there's been enough uh, twist and uplift. Whereas this, this stops it dead in its tracks. Section number two that we want to cover, that was roof assemblies, is uh, wall strengthening and increase of racking strength. Uh, Mason Knowles has a great secondary section here that his research demonstrates that closed cell spray foam can help increase the racking strength of wall assemblies. Three research studies have been conducted by SPFA, Spray Foam Polyurethane Alliance, and its predecessor, Polyurethane Contractors Division of Society of Plastics, on the racking strength of closed cell spray foam. In 1992, and again in 96, they were contacted with Research Center to conduct racking load tests on closed cell spray foam insulated walls. During a design racking event such as hurricane, there would be less permanent deformation of wall elements and possibly less damage to, to the structure that was braced with spray foam filled walls. 1992 research tested the spray foam installed at three inches to wall panels constructed of plywood and vinyl cladding respectively. The panels used two by four wood studs with spacing 16 on center and 24 on center, 32 inch on center and 40 inch on center. Each indicated in table two, closed cell spray foam increased the maximum racking load of a vinyl clad wall assembly from 913 pounds to over 2,800 pounds at 16 inch spacing and more than 2300 pounds even at the 40 inch spacing it doubled the maximum racking load of a plywood clad wall assembly at 16 inch spacing and 2.2 times the racking load at 24 inch spacing that's amazing the 1996 study measured the racking strength of osb and drywall clad walls respectively with metal studs at 16 inch on center as indicated in table three the closed cell spray foam insulated walls at three inches thick increased the drywall clad wall from 2400 pounds racking load to 5380 pounds and the osb clad walls from 4800 pounds racking load to 6000. in 2007 spfa tested closed cell spray foam insulated walls constructed with two by four wood studs 16 on center to both poly iso and osb sheeted wall assemblies in architectural testing as in indicated in table four the closed cell spray foam doubled the racking load of the poly iso sheeted wall assemblies here if we want to take a look at these reports 16 on center 24 32 and 48 and here's where your reports are on the panels and then the 1996 maximum racking strengths so this is incredible uh what we have seen out in the field is we've used closed cell spray foam in RTM structures, ready to move homes. And what we found was that they were able to delete interior plywood. So normal construction for uh, ready to move would be to sheet the exterior plywood, insulate the wall, sheet it with 3 8 plywood on the inside, both walls and, and uh, ceiling, 
and then put the sheetrock up on the inside. And this is to create a box effect so that the uh, RTM can be picked up, moved down the wall, down the wall, down the road, with minimal cracking of walls and ceiling so that they have fewer callbacks. When we reviewed this data that you're seeing here, racking strength, right, on these charts, when we reviewed that with some of the RTM builders, uh, they were able to delete the interior plywoods, which saved them a lot of time and quite a bit of money. So the structure became with roof and walls sprayed with closed cell became so rigid that however the house was uh, in the yard was exactly how it was sitting. So when they went to pick it up, it didn't move, it didn't shift. And when they went and placed it down at site, uh, it wouldn't exactly match up. It was frozen in the state that it was in the yard. So it was important for them to get the yards leveled out and have the, have almost like, you know, a build pro table where you start with a perfectly true flat surface to start your work on. They needed a, a very true and flat surface in the yard to build the structures to when they were spray foaming. So when they picked it up, it would be true. And if they made the foundation true to where it was going, they wouldn't have as much uh, differential in because they expect enough deflection in the buildings that minor discrepancies, the building will actually twist or settle down onto it. And with the spray foam, it didn't. So this makes a huge, huge change. Now, in the National Building Code of Canada, these, these things are not recognized yet, where majority of structure can very well be downgraded due to this amount of structural support, but the rules haven't been changed yet. And when we get into people that are building rafters, a lot of times the rafters can be chosen for snow load. They don't need to be chosen for depth of insulation. So I'll give you an example. If people are specifying two foot thick open web truss for just so they can get more insulation in and have more ventilation, that's not necessarily needed at all when choosing to go closed cell spray foam non-vented. Same thing with walls. I've had a number of people that haven't had to go with a two by six wall. They've chosen a two by four wall, put rigid insulation on the outside and put closed cell spray foam at either two or three inches thick inside the wall. The wall structurally is doing everything and thermally it's doing everything that they need it to do. So the advantage to using closed cell foam and the codes just don't recognize it yet, or maybe they never will if we don't get working on it, but you can make your choice based on structural load point for lumber and then graft the spray foam in to either help decrease the amount that you're going to need but for sure if you're making thicker walls and thicker roofs in order to accommodate more insulation closed cell spray foam and even open cell can help you uh, dial that back we've seen this a lot with uh, old-time homes that were built uh, during world war ii they've only got two by fours to deal with we don't get them to fur them out to two by six or two by eight we're leaving them as is, putting in two or three inches of closed cell foam, and those homes are warm, dry, through the harshest of Canadian climates. So if we can do it where we are, in our in our neck of the woods, Western Canada, where it's very, very cold, you definitely can do it through the, uh, the upper part of the United States. And then the same physics are true, folks, uh, for Florida and Nevada and Arizona and Texas, and then on and on and on where it's warm, even Georgia, where you want to keep it air conditioned 80 90 percent of the time the same is true you can very easily have the insulation working to keep the ac in and the cold and the hot out versus heat in and cold outside right so the the physics just flip so i hope you find this interesting we're going to keep this short because there's a lot of technical data here it shows you the the racking strength and the wind uplift and the sheeting support that spray foam gives it's mind-blowingly awesome. If you're going with a new structure, choose spray foam for all of these advantages. Structural support, air sealing, and then you're not gonna have these wind uplift areas in your windy neck of the woods. So comment, share, like, and subscribe. i really like to hear from you. Tell me what you think, and we'll catch you on more videos. And I think we're gonna be doing quite a bit more uh, with Mason Knowles' information. There's a wealth of information here to see. Talk to you soon.